This quick guide video provides an explanation of how to instruct the patient to perform CVAMP testing. The cervical vestibular evoked myogenic potential is an inhibitory response. Therefore, it is important to instruct the patient to contract their sternocleidomastoid muscle in order to obtain accurate and reliable CVAMP recordings. There are many ways in which the sternocleidomastoid muscle can be contracted, but this quick guide video will focus on the most common method. Most clinicians instruct the patient to contract their sternocleidomastoid muscle by simply asking them to turn their head 45 degrees in the opposite direction to the ear which is being stimulated, with flexion of 30 degrees. In other words, if the right ear is being stimulated, then the patient is instructed to turn their head to the left and place their chin on their shoulder. Note, the patient must only turn his or her head without turning their body or shoulders. The shoulders must be maintained in the same position as when sitting in a normal upright position. This is very important, as a body twist may lead to poor sternocleidomastoid muscle contraction and therefore result in poor C-vent recordings. In order to ensure that the C-vent recordings are of good quality, the interacoustics eclipse houses two methods which the patients can use to monitor their muscle contraction, otherwise known as EMG. The first method provides a visual cue to the patient being tested. As they turn their head, the software will display the EMG contraction on a separate monitor screen. When the patient being tested has a contracted value that is within the range selected by the operator, the measurement bar will be green, indicating good contraction of the muscle. If the patient under contracts or over contracts, the value is shown red or blue, depending on the ear which is being stimulated. Alternatively, the EMG activity can be monitored by a sound cue. A 250Hz tone is played into the non-test ear when the muscle is not contracted sufficiently. When the muscle is contracted in the range of contraction, then the tone in the non-test ear stops and the test stimulus begins in the test ear. Lastly, as the clinician, it is imperative that you monitor the patient during the test and provide encouragement and explanation if you notice the patient not performing the test correctly. This concludes this quick guide video on patient instructions for performing CVEMP testing.